Good morning, Smoky Hill Vineyard. Life right now kind of feels like the Broncos quarterback situation. The promise and hope of something better, the beginning of the season we thought it was a lock, is being met with disappointment, frustration, and exhaustion. In case you didn't know, this last Sunday our starting quarterback and two backups were all out with COVID. So Kendall Hinton, a wide receiver who was only on our practice squad, hadn't played quarterback since his freshman year of college. Hadn't even practiced any snaps in preparation. He was thrown in as our starter. Needless to say, it wasn't pretty. And we were blown out by New Orleans. Side note, major props to Hinton for stepping up. A lot of stuff is happening that hasn't ever happened before. 2020 is a year of firsts, and we're about to have our first Christmas during a pandemic. And yet this month has the potential of bringing something together, a restoring of our souls, a restoring of your soul. As we enter Advent, the weeks leading up to Christmas, something new and fresh awaits us. Seasons teach us to pay attention and enter into something beyond our immediate circumstances. Advent is about preparing to celebrate, and it's also about longing, anticipation, expectation. So we're going to focus on this theme of longing as we prepare to celebrate, whatever celebration might look like at the end of this month. Titus chapter 2 verse 13 says, We are filled with hope, even as we wait for the glorious return of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. We're filled with hope as we wait. <laughs> this longing, this desire, craving, if you will, is the context for being filled with hope. And you might ask, why would we be longing for his return? Isn't that when Jesus is going to come back and kind of take us out of the mess that we're in here? And No, it's just so beyond that. And so I want to just paint this picture for you from the scriptures that would help produce this longing. And talk about some practical ways we can do that. The reasons we long for his return is because, first of all, we get to see him. We get to see Jesus. And everything changes when you see Jesus. When Jesus returns, he's going to set every wrong right. Creation is restored. It's going to be restored. There's going to be a marriage of heaven and earth. Do you know when Jesus returns that the ultimate fulfillment of the prayer he taught us to pray is going to happen? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's going to happen. Jesus, the king of glory. When Jesus returns, every evil is once and for all going to be vanquished and removed. Revelation 19 through 21 paints a colorful picture of the things that are coming. And I was reading through that again this week and reading the commentary at the bottom of my study Bible. Um, and, it, and it says this about one of the verses in Revelation 19. I love this. It says, this passage shows the fulfillment of the greatest single promise of history, the return of Christ to reign on earth. And when Jesus returns and we're transformed, um, it, I love what Tolkien said about it. He said, everything sad will be untrue. Basically, everything that doesn't make sense will make sense. All suffering will cease. I mean, just beautiful. So listen to these other Bible verses speaking about this longing. And as I read these, I would encourage you, if it helps, just to close your eyes, to listen to the words 
Of course, I'm going to be emphasizing this theme of longing and waiting and eagerness and expectation. But just listen for whatever would stand out to you and then maybe jot that down or put a note in your phone or something just to remind you to come back to that and just pray about that. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8 says, Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. From the letter of Jude, verses 20 and 21, You, however, should stand firm in the love of God, Keep yourself in the love of God, constructing a life within the holy faith, praying in the Spirit's prayer as you wait eagerly for the mercy of our Lord Jesus, the anointed, which leads to eternal life. Side note there, as we wait on Jesus and long for his return, we're not supposed to be worrying about that. We're not supposed to worry and freak and get out timetables and try to figure it all out. He says that we're waiting eagerly for the mercy of the Lord Jesus to be revealed. Hebrews 9.28 says, So the anointed one, our liberating king, was offered once in death to bear the sins of many and will appear a second time. Not to deal again with sin, but to rescue those who eagerly await his return. And then Romans 8, verses 18 to 20 in the Message Translation. That's why I don't think there's any comparison between the present hard times and the coming good times. The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. Meanwhile, the joyful anticipation deepens. This week I had a UPS package being delivered and it required a signature. And... I was afraid I was going to miss it the day that it was scheduled to come. Um, I was in the basement of the house and couldn't really hear the doorbell if it was going to ring. And my wife was on a Zoom call. And, and so I get on my phone, I download the app, and I'm finding the location of the driver on a map. And he was in another part of town for about three hours. I'm listening for the doorbell. I had to turn my music down a little bit. And all of a sudden he showed up and I went to the door and he didn't have me sign anything. He just hands the package to me and says, here you go. I just needed to put this in your hands. <laughs> and I just thought in that moment, even as I was preparing for this message and thinking about longing and waiting for the return of Jesus about, I mean, you can relate to that kind of nervous anxiety and the watchful attitude and paying attention. And of course the analogy breaks down on several levels, but, but that whole sense of anticipation, thinking about the return of Jesus, the scripture says to lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. We are filled with hope as we wait for the glorious return of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. I love the quote from Augustine talking about longing, and he said this, He who loves the coming of the Lord is not he who affirms it is far off, nor is it he who says it is near. It is he who, whether it be far or near, awaits it with sincere faith, steadfast hope, and fervent love. Longing, by the way, is not to be confused with optimism. It's sometimes... Uh, optimism is actually can be counterproductive or the opposite of hope and faith. Optimism, and, and the reason I say that is because, because optimism tends to have at its core a self-reliance, 
oh, I think everything is going to turn out great. Even in the worst of times, we can pick ourselves back up. We're resilient. We're amazing. And today you might find yourself in a place going, I'm, my bucket is dry. I don't have anything. I don't have anything to give. I'm imperfect. I'm very aware of that. I, listen to these words from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who was a pastor during World War II and himself lived in a concentration camp. He said this, the celebration of Advent is possible only to those who are troubled in soul, who know themselves to be poor and imperfect, and who look forward to something greater to come. How can you cultivate longing this month in preparation for celebration. When I listen to that, those words from Bonhoeffer, I think, well, we've all, we're all starting in the same place, imperfect and in need of Jesus. I was talking with my son who lives in Southern California this last week, and he was sharing with me about how some an amazing stuff that was happening and just talking about the discontent that he'd been experiencing and a longing to see Jesus do some stuff. So he took some friends and they decided they were going to drive around and go minister to and serve the homeless and ask how they might pray for them to ask God to show up. And so they went to a couple places and ended up going to a place like a home Depot where there were day workers that were hanging out, hoping someone was going to hire them. Uh, most all the guys there spoke Spanish. My son knows a little Spanish. And so, so they came up to this guy who had a knee brace and a walking cane and asked if they could pray for him. And it was pretty cool. And he said the guy was pretty subdued, um, but it just felt good to be in a different setting and just reaching out and trying to show the love of Jesus. And so the next week they came back and they started bringing donuts and have gone back every Wednesday and they saw the guy who, and he wasn't wearing a brace. And they went over to him and asked, how are you doing? And the son hit the guy's son who wasn't there when they prayed for him. He was there and he said, oh, you're the ones who prayed for my dad. He said, at first, I didn't believe anything had happened. I was pretty skeptical. And then he said this, he said, then we had to cross the street after that, and he said, my dad hustled across the street, and normally we have to help him walk. Wow. And just seeing the joy in my son and the longing in him, there's something about giving away hope that helps us engage with Jesus, and it nurtures a longing in us for Jesus to show up more and for his second coming. And you might go, you know what? I don't know that I'm going to drive around and go look for people to pray for. But here's what you can do. You can ask Jesus to put one of your neighbors on your heart. Ask Jesus to put them on your heart and show you how to pray for them and just begin praying for them this month and then look for some opportunity to show his love. I was praying for one of my neighbors, one that um, I've not really spoken much with over the last few years, don't see him much. And I was praying for him. I just kind of, he was on my heart. He's, and I just started praying for him. And then one night I had a dream about him and it was really strange and it was, Something happened in their house and they had to come over to our house and, and, uh, and then the weirdest thing happened. So a couple weeks after that dream, he texts me and says, Hey, our water's out. They're on a well. And he said, I could, we, can I, could we have some water? <laughs> I was like, so anyway, one thing led to another, and it was just the most beautiful affirmation of when you ask God to put somebody on your heart and to pray for them, hope gets renewed and God shows up. So what can you do? Well, first of all, just be honest with where you are. If you're sad, if you're exhausted, if you feel like you're a stand-in quarterback for the Broncos, you can join in with us 
focusing on this theme of longing this month. Read and reflect on this theme in the Bible. And you can give hope. Who is that person that came to mind even as I was talking about this stuff that maybe you could reach out to? I mean, you could come and serve at our food bank as well. There are different places that stuff's happening that you can really kind of a low bar, low risk opportunity just to serve and see what Jesus might do. And again, serving isn't the answer to everything, but it gets you in the traffic of God's heart. (laughs) And finally, just invite Jesus to fill you with hope as you wait for the glorious return of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask you just to bow your head, close your eyes if that helps you concentrate. And we're going to pause just for a moment and invite the Lord to come and touch you, to touch all of us. Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. And I ask that you would come and touch each person listening. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal yourself to them as the God of hope. I pray that you would increase their knowledge of your love. I pray that you would increase their longing for your return. And Lord, only you can do that as we engage you. So Lord, would you give them strength? Would you give them wisdom? And Lord, when they feel like uh, they don't know exactly how much they should do or how much they should wait on you to do, I just pray you'd help, help them to just jump in all the way and to give all they have as you give all you have. Lord, would you meet them in that place? And I pray even now, Holy Spirit, that you would come and that you would mend relationships that you would cause this hope to affect other areas of life. And I pray that Jesus, you would make yourself known. And if that's your desire right now, just tell him, just, you can whisper that prayer to him, Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Let me see who you really are. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in my life as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And if you prayed that, Jesus, here's your heart. If you prayed any of that, Jesus, here's your heart and he responds. And so I would encourage you just to be grateful and continue to respond. God loves you, and may he increase your longing. (laughs) Amen. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We hope and pray that the Lord has met you in some really powerful ways. Uh, What we do know about God's amazing ability is that he's not bound by time and space, that he has the ability to meet us all in different spaces and different places and in different moments. And so we just pray that the moment, whatever moment that was for you today, or maybe moments that the Lord would use it to carry you forward this week and even beyond. And if you had one of those moments that you'd like to talk about with someone or you have some prayer requests that came up during the service today, we would just invite you to get in touch with our team. We would love to journey with you. You can fill out that connect card that Mike shared about earlier and simply use the comments link to share with us and one of our team will be in touch. And if today is the first time that you're taking a step, the next step in your journey with Jesus and you're saying yes to following him, we've got some incredible resources to get in your hands and help you along the way. So again, Use that connect card. Let us get in touch with you and let us know how we can be supporting you. You know, this thing called following Jesus is not a, it's not a static thing. It's a dynamic thing. It's something that's constantly evolving and changing and growing. And this is why it's called a journey of faith. The idea is that we're on journey together. And so we pray that the Lord would continue to meet you on your journey and that there would be maybe some next steps for you that would come out of even this week that will allow you to continue to move your journey forward with Jesus. And we just pray that God would meet you in all those places. Have a great week. God God bless. bless you.